Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today's card is a scene card, but it's a little bit different than my normal scene. Um, so today I am going to be working with the brand new Brilliant Day stamp set, which I love anything that is crafty themed, like any stamps that are that are crafty themed. They totally make me super happy. And then also the Rainbow Wishes stamp set, and later on I'm going to bring in the stencil. Um, so here I'm just trying to get my positioning correct because I wanted the card to look like colored pencils that were laying on top of a desk for somebody who was working on a card. I hope that makes sense. So like making a card of making a card. <laughs> um, but anywho, so my, the, the rainbow, the actual rainbow in Rainbow Wishes is a little bit too large for, because it's meant to fit a real card and not this, you know, made up card. Um, and so I did have to take out the extra circle, the outside circle, and I did that just by inking up the stamp and then going in with a baby wipe and just cleaning up that one line. Um, and then I would run my finger over to make sure there was no moisture and then go ahead and stamp it down. Basically, this made my uh, rainbow just a little bit smaller. Now I did lose a color, which is always a bummer. Um, but it was necessary for me to be able to get it to fit my card. Now, because there is a little bit of lag time in between the inking of the stamp and between the actual stamping, because I have to get rid of that line, um, the stamping is a little bit more faint. Um, so I just stamped it multiple times until I was happy with the way that it looked. I'm going to do the same thing um, with my sentiment. You'll see when we when we get there. Um, so here, just stamping that down, and I, you guys know me, if you watch my videos, you know that I always, um, outline, re-outline everything with a Copic Safe marker, so this isn't a huge deal for me, because I'm going to fix it. But if you have a, um, a misty or another stamp position, or you can just stamp it until you're happy with the darkness. Here, because I don't like cutting my stamps, I will do it if I have to, um, but I don't really like cutting them. I know you can put them back together, I realize that, but they just don't look as nice. Um, so here, I just, the little hack that I use is some tape, um, sketch tape works, right here I'm using masking paper, um, and then I just block off the part that I don't want any ink to get on. Then I'm going to use a scrap piece of paper to make sure after I've cleaned the stamp there isn't anything left on there, and then um, I'm going to move the stamp to um, put the word colorful underneath it. And I did have to like scooch my whole uh, cardstock over so that I could fit in the first part of the stamp. So it all fit in the misty together nicely. And then this one I ended up stamping three times because the font is so much more bold. And these are the first times that I use a stamp. So, I mean, if you um, are just into stamping, then you probably don't know, but if you are a seasoned stamper, then you definitely do know. The first time you stamp, it's always terrible um, because the this, this stamps aren't seasoned yet. They don't have any ink on them. Um, and so you can other, I've heard of people, you know, using an eraser to season them and all kinds of things. I don't, I just stamp it and I've got enough ink on there that it stamps nice. Um, so here, this is the last part of my like quote unquote scene that will be stamping. Um, and here, this is the colored pencils. Um, now there's also crayons in this set and they're made to fit um, an A to, what are they? I think they're six inches. I think they're six inches across. And I did stamp these twice. Um, because there's a lot going on here. And then you're going to be like, Kelly, it's so weird that bottom corner is totally empty. And you're right, it is. But I'm all about stretching my stamps and getting the more, most bang for my buck. So I'm going to fix that. Don't you worry. Enter T-square ruler. So in order for my scene to work, I needed to create a background that was like a desk. Um, now I can't do like, I wish I could mimic my own desk. But my desk is a glass top. Um, it's black and, and, you know, clear, just see through glass. So I would have to draw all the mess that's underneath my desk um, on my card. And that's not really that pretty. So I just went with a straight wood desk. It was, <laughs> it was the easiest way to get the look that I wanted. And here I'm just coming in. Um, I'm using the grid uh, paper pack from Simon. That's always my background. You guys know that. I love this thing. There's a couple of other companies that have them too. My favorite thing is I think does and, and somebody else. Uh, forgive me, my allergies. You guys know this by now. Um, so anyway, so I'm just using it's one square or a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to go back in 
and the EK Success journaling pens, which is what I'm using. Now you can also use a Micron, you can use a Copic Multiliner. There's a lot of options out there. I just really like these ones. Um, and it was kind of a happy accident that I, that I found them. But anywho, um, they come in different size nibs. And what that means is how thick or um, bold your line is. And so I'm, I'm working with a 0.35 here because that was the closest I could get to the actual stamp line. And then I'm just elongating those lines. So I'm making my colored pencils just a little bit longer. And while this might seem a little bit tedious, um, it really did not take that long. And um, it was really, really very simple until, wait for it. Oh, that happened. But at this point, I'm already so invested in this card. I'm not starting again just because I have one little wonky line. So I'm going to cover it up. Don't you worry. Everything is fixable. Tell you guys all the time. Don't don't throw it away. Don't do it because you can fix it. Um, so yeah, so then once I'm done doing uh, this part of it, then I'm going to move on to the coloring. And there's a lot of it. There's just, you know, one layer cards. There's always a lot of coloring. This video is long. Make sure you got the popcorn. Pause it if you need to. Um, so now doing the uh, wooded desk in the background, I'm just going to fill it in with my lightest color and then draw my wood grain, um, you know, with my darker colors as well as the shadow um, to make the, the card uh, kind of pop off from the desk so that it, it looks a little bit more dimensional. For my wood grain, I have multiple videos on it showing you guys how I do um, my wood grain. I am going to show you basically the whole process here um, with this card, but it's not a very good indication because it's only a quarter of an inch. And basically, I just draw um, little lines, little whoops and swirls um, so that it looks like it has a wood grain texture. There isn't like a mad science to it. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. Except for this top part. This top part was hard because I did the wood grain up and down um, and I have such a very little spot to work in. Here I got into the white and so I got my colorless blender to fix it but then I realized that it was just going to keep happening and I was just going to go ahead and wait till the end <laughs> so I could just, you know, get them all at one time. Um, yeah, so what has been, what have I been doing? Um, this is our first week that we've had Emma home and it's been a little bit crazy. Um, the other day, oh, I know what I was going to tell you guys. The, so if you follow me on Instagram, I share a lot of things on Instagram. And one of them was I came home from work one night, okay, and I needed to edit a video. I, um, Eric and I get off one hour different. I get off an hour earlier before him. So on the nights that I'm going to be able to see him, I try to get home, get, you know, my voiceover or editing or whatever it is done. Uh, before he comes over so that way I can actually spend time with him. Um, so this particular night I needed to get this video done and up and um, I came home, you know, changed into my pajamas, let the dog out. This is before we had Emma. Um, the whole deal, I'm good to go. I sit down at my craft desk and um, like I don't, you never, I don't know what it is. Like is it movement that catches your eye or is it you know, something like darker colored on the cream colored carpet that you're not used to seeing. I'm not really sure what it is, but something somehow caught my eye and made me look under the desk. And there was a huge spider right underneath my craft desk, right up against the wall. So knowing that Eric is coming over, I immediately sent him a Snapchat of the spider and I'm like, no lollygagging. Like, no BSing with the guys after work, no, you know, stopping to pick up, you know, milk or potato chips or whatever, get gas, like, none of that. Come over. Now, I'm being held hostage. And then, of course, I put it on Instagram because, I don't know, I feel like I shouldn't have to be the only one subjected to that, honestly. I just don't. I want people to know my plight. Um, and so, I just sit here and stare at it. I mean, what am I going to do? I'm not going to kill it. It's, I have an L desk and it was like catty corner to me. So kind of like back in the L. So I'm not going to get under the desk to kill it in an enclosed space. What if it flies at my face or something? I'll be, I, 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 I'll be defenseless. I can't do it. I'll knock myself unconscious and then he'll be able to crawl on me and I will die. That's what will happen. Um, 
So I just decide I'm just going to wait it out. I'm just going to wait it out until um, Eric gets here and he can kill it. So I just sit here waiting. Just sit here waiting. And then the worst thing ever happens. Second worst thing ever. The worst thing ever would be it actually flying at my face. The second worst thing ever happens. And if you've ever been in my position where like you couldn't get a cup over it or you couldn't get in there to kill it or whatever, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that was that I lost it. I lost it. The worst feeling, oh my gosh, guys, like just sheer panic when you have been watching an insect or a spider um, and or the fast crawlers. I don't like fast movers either. What are they? The silverfish? Those creep me out. I don't like them. Um, but anyway, when you've been watching one and then all of a sudden they're gone and you don't know what's become of them, then you just feel like they're on you. Like they could be on you at any second. They could be sneak attacking. It could be a spider ninja. You don't know. But it makes me sweaty and panicky. So I'm looking, 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 because now I've lost it. I update Eric to the, to the Snapchat. I also update Instagram that I've lost it. Then directly underneath me, um, because I don't, this, it, there's just not a whole lot of room. Um, I have my printer on the floor underneath my craft desk. And so I'm sitting there looking, 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 and then I see him come out from behind the printer. Well, the problem is, I've told you it's an L desk. I sit at one L to craft and one L to edit my videos. And he's not, he's not going toward the crafting way, which is the way that I would not be. He's coming my way, coming out from behind the printer. So I'm like, oh my gosh, he's on the move now. Like, what am I going to do? Because before he was just chilling and I could just watch him, could just wait him out. It's like, you know every SWAT hostage negotiation, like time's on your side, just, just wait it out. And, um, but now he's moving. So he comes out from behind the printer and then he, he stops. And so, um, I'm like, okay, like updated situation here. I've located him again. Um, side note, back to the card. So here, this is the, one of the stencils in the Rainbow Wishes stencil. Um, I really, <laughs> it really bothered me. I know I have problems. It really bothered me that my sentiment uh, didn't make sense on my card, okay? My design of my card within a card is completely off because I had to move the sentiment over to make room for the colored pencils. Um, and I did not have a cloud stamp. So I used the cloud stencil to, um, you know, get that one layer look that I wanted. And then I'm going to be using, um, I think it's, is it Sweet Neck? No, that's an orange. I can't remember the name of it. Hold on, let me look. Wild Mango um, to stamp the sun. Now, yes, I know I stamped my sun right over my cloud. I'm fine with it. Some clouds are a little bit more transparent. I'm good with it. And then I'm just going to color in um, the actual sun kind of peeping behind the cloud and the rainbow. And then I'm gonna um, flick a little color out where the rays are. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I'm doing there. Um, so anywho, so now I'm waiting for Eric to get here. I'm watching the the spider, um, and he it, he seems a little like itchy to get on with the rest of his life, and I'm a little itchy to end his life. But he's still under the desk, so I still cannot get him, you know, safely, without there being fear of him getting on me in some way. Um, and so he keeps crawling and now he's at the edge of the desk, but he's just behind like the leg of the desk. So still under the desk. Um, so finally, miraculously, uh, Eric arrives and I point him out and um, he gets down there and kills him, which makes me so happy. Um, and then I, you know, could live the rest of my life, um, you know, in peace. But... The other, now, you guys all told me to get those glue traps. You were like, tarot ant bait and tarot glue traps. And the ant bait, the liquid ant bait, was amazing. I mean, that, that thing killed my ants, and they have not been back. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, so, I would highly recommend those. But you also told me to get the glue traps. And so, I did. And I felt like they were working really well. Uh, I put one in the craft room up against the wall because they say to put them up against the wall. Um, and then I put one in my bedroom up against the wall, one in Peanut's room up against the wall, and one in the kitchen up against the wall, the outside wall. 
And so I felt like I had all my bases covered for the glue traps. Um, and then I promptly told Eric that it was his job to check them because I didn't want to know. I did not want to know. Um, and so the, the one in the craft room, I can't remember what it was. Nathan dropped something. I dropped something. Somebody dropped something in the craft room and I bent down to pick it up. And I happened to catch that there was a spider carcass in the glue trap in the craft room. And so I tell Eric, you are going to have to, to get rid of this. It's got a carcass in it. And uh, we lead very busy lives with very busy schedules, and he forgot to get it. But um, last weekend, last weekend, um, he was uh, folding some clothes in my bedroom and uh, was like, hey, these glue traps are doing their job, like, well. And I was like, how well? And he's like, you don't want to know how well. So then that was the one in my bedroom. And so I was terrified that there was just like copious amounts of spiders in there. And he said, but I can't get the bodies out. And I was like, no, you're not supposed to get the bodies out. You just throw away the whole glue trap and then we put a new one down. Like no big deal. Here I've sped up the, the coloring because um, I wanted you to be able to see all of the color combinations. But I'm literally doing the same thing five five times, six times, one, two, three, four, five times. I can count. Aren't you proud of me? Um, and so it wasn't necessary to just watch the same thing over and over again. It's already 20, 20 some minutes long, right? Um, so he was like, yeah, it's doing it really well. And I was like, okay, just throw, just throw the whole glue trap away. Um, and then I said, did you get the one in the craft room? I know that one has uh, carcasses in it. And he said, no, but I'll get it now. So then he's like, you have to understand, I guess, coming from situations where, you know, at work, working for a police department, there are situations that arise that would be, that are, genuinely are, the worst day of people's lives. And they are panicked and they are overwhelmed and they are emotional and they are all of those things. And so in working in that field for so many years, you kind of become a bit numb to that. Um, here's how I'm gonna, we're going back. Here's how I, I'm going to fix that colored pencil there. I chose the darkest combination that I had, uh, which was the blue one, to just go ahead and go over that line. And then the black line that comes out really isn't very noticeable because it blends into that dark blue. Um, and nobody will be any the wiser that I didn't know how to outline a line. You know what I'm saying? Um, here, I didn't really love how, like, the huge difference between the darkest color and the lightest color. So I am going to go back over it again, just trying to get a better blend for the rest, because I did not want to. Ooh, sorry about that. I'm sure you heard that. That was my knee hitting my desk. Um, but because I didn't want to pull out 800 million colors to color up all of these colored pencils, I'm going to do something called glazing you've seen my videos before, you've seen this technique before. And what this is, is basically if you have X amount of alcohol markers and you maybe can't afford to get any more, or you're slowly growing your collection, or maybe there's a color you're trying to match that you don't already own. Glazing is putting one color over top of another to create a new color. And because Copics are transparent, you can do that with no issue. So in order to create my rainbow of colors, you know, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, 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 blue, I'm not going to pull out all of these different Copic markers. What I am going to do is use color glazing to put the color next to it. So for, you know, the green or the uh, green, blue, I put down blue and then I put green on top of it. For the yellow, I'm going to, or the yellow, green, I'm going to put down yellow and then put green on top of it. So that way it's creating subtle different colors that still match the card, um, but don't require me to pull out all of these crazy marker colors. Or if you don't have all of the crazy marker colors, um, then you don't have to use all of them. So anywho, um, so he, it, it basically makes us numb to weird or crazy situations. Not that we're, we don't care, it just doesn't seem like a very big deal. Like the first time I was working and somebody drove their car into a house, I was like, oh my word, there's a car in a house and everybody hurry, lights and sirens, house, car, car, house, oh my word. And then by like the fifth one, 
because it really happens more often than you think. I'm like, all units respond over to vehicle drove into a house. You know, it happens. Um, so here I'm speeding up that process again because again, it's just the same thing over and over again with different color combinations. Um, so because of that, because his demeanor is that, where nothing is really, like delivering news is not like a big deal. There's nothing really shocking anymore. Um, I say to him, was there any other carcasses in the uh, glue trap? And he goes, yeah, baby mouse. And I'm like, be serious because he's very sarcastic. Um, I'm like, come on, be serious. And he's like, nah, serious, like, there's a baby mouse in here. And he turns it, and sure enough, there's a baby mouse in there. And I was like, what the... Like, so now I've had tree frogs, I've had a slug, I've had multiple species of spiders, I've had multiple species of flies and mosquitoes and all of those things. Um, and wh wh what was the other thing? There was a weird thing. I have got the slug who I saved his life, he's welcome. Um, and now I got a mouse. And I was like, I hit, like in my married house, we had mice. So I was like, I don't hear them like scampering or scurrying, like you can hear them. Um, and I was like, I don't hear them. And it was in my craft room again, which is the people when they landscape this house, it's a slab house, so it has no basement. And the mulch goes right up into the house, which is a terrible plan. Um, so now that all that coloring is done, I'm going to go in and start adding in the shadows um, for the colored pencils and for the clouds. So the clouds, I wanted the card to look like any other card that I would make. You know what I mean? How I typically shade my, my clouds and my rainbows and my backgrounds. Um, but then I'm also going to add some shadows to the colored pencils so it's very clear that they are laying on top of this card on top of this desk. Um, so it's just, it seems like it's never ending. So what day was that? Yesterday? Saturday. Um, we had an exterminator come out, uh, which is, um, Eric called him, it's a friend of their family. He, he came out here and sprayed the living daylights out of everything, all the things. Um, and he said like 10 minutes, it'll be dry and then you'll be good. Rain won't wash it away. None of that. So he sprayed inside and outside, including all of my, like, mulch beds and stuff. Um, so hopefully this winter, you know, this fall winter, will be better than last fall winter when they were just everywhere. Um, I hope I killed them all. I know there's spider lovers out there, and I'm sorry, and I know I eat the bugs, and I know God created them for a purpose, but that purpose cannot be to live in my house. I cannot allow it. I'm sorry. I have to survive. Um, anyway... So he came out and did that, but he did say that um, he did not see any signs of mice. He thinks it's just like one random mouse happened to maybe like get in from a hole outside and then run along the walls and that's where he came out. He didn't see any wear patterns. He didn't see any poop. He didn't see any of that. Um, and also, I'm a little bit disappointed in Molly, I have to tell you, that there was a mouse in the house and... Huh, mouse in the house. I rhymed. Anyway. Um, and she did not even notice. Like, you are a dog. This is your job. If there's a squirrel three doors down, silently climbing a tree. You are losing your mind barking to try and get at it. But there's a mouse in the house, and you ain't even notice? Like, she's losing her touch in her old age, I think. Um, so, now that I put the shadows on the colored pencils, I, again, like I said, I wanted it to look like any card I would do, and you know I love to um, outline all of my things and add, like, a little bit of a background. I did consider doing a Distress Ink or Distress Oxide, like, uh, ink blended background on this particular card, but because of the sun and the way that I did the rays, it would be next to impossible to mask that. And then I would have a very clear, even if I could, um, it would have a very uh, clear line of delineation, and I did not want that. So I opted to just do the blue outline, um, like you've seen me doing, you know, in some of my cards, um, and just kind of fill that in so that it wasn't stark white. It also helped um, kind of cover up any of the areas. I think I had one or two where I maybe had some very light little fingerprints from cleaning up the rainbow and then putting the stamp back down and all that jazz. Uh, so just some very little, uh, or very pale blues up there. Um, and then, you all know what's coming next, we're going to outline this business. I'm going to outline all the business because I cannot help myself. It just looks so much better. 
And there are people who say, you know, can't you just stamp it again? Yes, I probably could. But to me, this is easier and I enjoy the process. I enjoy the outlining, but you very well could just um, over stamp it. Here I'm using these moon, the, the moonstone, moonstone rhinestones uh, that I simply cannot get enough of. I love them. They are one of my favorite things that Honeybee's ever released. And I'm doing that with the um, matte me, multi-medium matte collage medium matte. It's dry as matte, yo. That's what I got. And then I put glitter on all of the things. Glitter on the rainbow, glitter on the cloud and the sun. Um, I'm going to add a couple of little white highlights to my colored pencils um, just to give them a little extra something. You know I love the details on a card. And then that is it. Like that's the whole card. Um, I really like it. I think it's fun. I think it is a little bit different than the scenes I normally make. And I hope the recipient can appreciate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye.